All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. And uh, I know I just did a live stream yesterday. I'm going to do another one because there's a lot of attention on dogs right now. Important time right now. There's a lot of attention on dogs. You know, I think people are more open to the discussion right now or to our proposal or my proposal and the people who agree with me the dog should be banned 100 percent they should be banned nobody should be allowed to own them and at the very least you know if that sounds ridiculous at the very least ban bully breeds ban large dogs german shepherds bully breeds most definitely and other vicious dogs then we'll go from there then we'll see how many uh babies and kids are attacked by the smaller dogs but i've listened to a lot of media outlets their take uh they've Everybody has covered this story. I've listened to as many different media outlets as I could find. And this question stands out like no other question. It begs to be asked. And it's really, it's wrong to not have this discussion with her, with Jacqueline Durand. What exactly are you trying to inspire people to do exactly? Because I just don't get it. I believe she is being called right now. She is being called to speak out against dogs. And she's not stepping up to the plate. Now, it's not just her. She's just one of many. But right now, it's definitely her turn. It's her turn, the forces of nature, and we help to put this energy and spirit out there, calling her to speak out against this dangerous, very dangerous culture that we've held on to for far too long, this primitive culture that leaves us mutilated like a piece of meat. And it's unnecessary. It's all brought onto ourselves. Not only do we bring them into society, make them legal to own, anybody can own them, but people treat them like family members, bring them inside of their homes of all places. Very primitive. It's time to question this primitive and insane, absolutely insane lifestyle, people. So I just want to share this one short uh, coverage on this story. And CBS, I, I guess it's the CBS, the same media outlet we watched first time. Maybe it's a different branch or whatever. And I'm going to try my best to hammer this point home. Hammer this question home, Jacqueline. What do you want to inspire people to do? Because in my opinion, yeah, you are being called to the stand right now. And you should want to inspire people right now. You should want to inspire them to not be a dog sitter. I'm, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. Isn't this the most obvious thing? The first thing to pop into your head? Okay, what do you uh, want to inspire people? Well, to not be a dog sitter. To not go over random people's homes who got dogs. You know, you're in enough danger if you just own dogs. Danger of your own dogs. Have any of y'all thought that one of those dogs could start eating her face while she sleep? Big shout out to everybody uh, able to join me in this brief live stream. Four-Legged Plague, Serena. Beanie Girl, ABQ in the building. Dogs eat O2 
open wounds like that. You heard about the guy who had his leg eaten off. I think it was like amputated, amputated because he had an infection on his foot. It's like an open wound. A dog will smell that, start licking it and eating it. Could you imagine her now waking up with one of her dogs eating on her face? She's still in danger. She's now increased the chances of her own dogs mutilating her. This is crazy. So I want y'all to check this out in this question that I propose. This discussion that I propose is going to jump out at you. And these people are going to come across as totally zoinked out. And it is because they're not having the most obvious discussion that we should be having right now. Is this a good idea? Is this dog nutter culture a good idea? Right? Now let's get started on this short video only three minutes 24 seconds long as seeing the extent of jacqueline's injuries the damage to her cheeks her nose her mouth it can be jarring but her father says she doesn't worry about what other people think so neither does he still the reaction they got has been a welcome surprise 22-year-old Jacqueline Durand wanted to share the story of how two dogs she'd been hired to pet sit attacked her, biting her more than 800 times. Uh, my leg, my arm, my face. I, I thought I was going to die. More importantly, she's wanted to share the story of her recovery, which will likely take years. I didn't ask for this, so I think that it's time to show who I am now, and I can't be scared of it. Her father, John, calls her the most courageous person he's ever known. And she's such a... Do y'all understand that they're, they are heaping praise on this young lady because she's simply willing to show her face? That's the only reason that, look at the title of the video. North Texas dog mauling survivors resilience spreads hope. Some of these media outlets, they started off saying that this is a story about hope and inspiration. And they never talk about what, in what way. Here is her father. Listen to what he says. A light of hope. She's such a bright light. Uh, that's how we feel. But that takes on such extra special meaning from people who she has never met. And since her interview aired on CBS News, her family has realized just what an impact she can have. We've seen and gotten so many comments in that exact same vein, Andrea people from all over the country who do not know Jacqueline, who have reached out as, as a person that represents incredible optimism and hope and courage. Jacqueline, he says, wants to keep spreading that message of resilience. Is to truly reach out to people and, and let them know that there is, there is reason to go forward and to push ahead, no matter how dark one day may seem. His what? That's the message? Does anybody understand that? The, the, the message is, according to them, that this is a, a story to help you push through hard times. So they're basically praising her for not committing suicide. For finally going out into public. How much sense does that make? I don't get that. See how vague that is? Isn't that, that, that feels deceptive. It feels like they're avoiding 
real conversations with this vague type of language. I hate this type of talk, man. I like for, for people to be direct with me. Don't talk in, in parables and get all sophisticated. Let's just be clear, make it plain. That's one of the problems with this, with today's world. People are just not straightforward. Man, let's continue. His daughter is three semesters shy of graduation from UT Dallas. She's determined to return and finish her degree in supply chain management, just like her older sister. The way that she responds to Brecca is, is just beautiful. Always close, the two are even more so now, as Barreca supports Jacqueline and helps her care for her wounds. So I have um, kind of a secret hope, call it a fantasy, um, because Barreca graduated in May of 2020. Uh, and that was, of course, the year of COVID. So she didn't have a commencement ceremony. One day when Jacqueline walks that stage, uh, I would love for her sister to be there with her as well because um, they deserve to share that honor together. Okay. Okay. So basically they're saying, well, her life is just gonna go on as usual. She's gonna go back to school. She's gonna go to the grocery store. That's basically what they're saying. Now I understand, I get it that uh, she's willing to actually do that, but really what other choice does she have? She's just gonna lay up inside of a bedroom the rest of her life? If she's going to live her life, she has to get out. She has to go back to her life. So why are we heaping praise, especially when there's an obvious discussion that needs to be had? I don't mind people praising her just do it for the right reasons in a way that's going to help people, man. You got, let's finish this. Let's finish this. It's almost over. It's an image of a happier future he's hanging on to. As determined and optimistic as Jacqueline is, her father says every day is still a struggle. I spoke to UT Dallas today and his secret hope of seeing his daughters graduate together is no longer a secret. That request is now being passed along to people who just may be able to grant it when the time comes. Andrea Lucia, CBS. Okay, this sounds like a sad story. Does anybody feel inspired by this? Let's have an honest moment here. I don't feel in inspired by this. I'm not in a good high spirit after listening to this story. And at the end, they said that every day is still a struggle. Well, I, I would imagine. So how is this inspirational? This is that zoinked out, crazy, spaced out talk that is going on. We This has to stop. Man, this has to stop. Stop speaking in, in just walk around speaking in parables and what is that? That language that they, uh, Jesus of the Bible said to have spoken in parables or whatever. This is what it, what it sounds like. People just being abstract and poets nonstop. Now, Jacqueline Durand, this is a very sad moment. And it'll be a whole lot more sad if Jacqueline refuses to do what she is really being called to do. And that is to be a voice for the youth. A voice for the youth. That, if you want to be uh, inspirational, you want to give people hope, you need to turn into an advocate, excuse me, an activist. Now, if you Google why dogs attack children. You will see this at the top of your screen. This will be the first thing suggested to you. 
small children near an aggressive dog might trigger. And they started off saying that it's you, it's the child that did something. They triggered. Did you trigger those dogs? It says may trigger a prey hunting instinct in the dog, causing an attack. So the dog is not attacking the child because it's just a bloodthirsty, aggressive creature. No, it attacks because the child did something and the child triggered something in the dog. And that is what caused the attack. Your child's behavior caused the attack. They are out here saying this about our youth, Jacqueline. You should speak out against this. Somebody who has had experience being attacked. Did you trigger a prey hunting instinct in those dogs? Or did you just walk through the front door like any normal human being would do? Isn't it painful to know that professionals are out here lying on children to protect dogs. I mean, these are bold faced lies. And they, this is at the, uh, at the top of the screen. This is the highest suggested, meaning this is what most people are going to believe. It continues. It says, or if a small child bothers or harm such a canine, it might respond with an attack to try to discipline the child. Jacqueline, look at this. Look at what I underline here. It says most, most dog attacks happen only after a dog is injured or provoked. This is what we talk about on this channel. For Jacqueline and all the new dog lovers who recently subscribed, this is what we talk about on this channel. Jacqueline, did you provoke those dogs? Do you think those dogs were injured that attacked you? And this happens all the time. This information that you see here is everywhere. Professionals all over the place regurgitating this narrative. Did you do any of these things? We've covered hundreds of dog attack cases on this channel and other channels other platforms and they never involve a child provoking a dog the most the child has done is try to pet the dog many times after getting permission from the dog's owner doesn't it bother you Jacqueline that so many so-called professionals are out here lying you have experienced an attack you know hands-on. Don't you think this is sinister to lie on Ch Jacqueline? You can do the searches yourself. There are plenty of uh, videos on YouTube. And you count the number of times you see a child provoking a dog before being attacked. We've looked at hundreds of attack videos here you probably know of some attacks off the back of your mind where, where the cat saved the uh, child from being attacked. The dog was in the process of attacking the child and the cat came out of nowhere. Did you see that child provoke that dog? No. The child didn't even see the dog. And in, in case you have not done the research, virtually all attacks follow that same pattern. Children minding their own business, not bothering dogs. 
A dog break free somehow, break free from a, lo a leash, dig a hole under a fence, and they go straight for the closest child and attack them. Doesn't it bother you? Now, you know how aggressive these things are. They're bloodthirsty. They're designed to kill. So when they attack and they get blood, they smell blood, they taste blood, it excites them. These are killers. Don't you think it's kind of sinister that so many professionals are out here lying, lying on kids to protect dogs? Now, many people already know they're going to say, well, look, you're wasting your time. You're not going to get through to a dog lover. And I know, I know. But I just want to prove it. I want to prove it. Jacqueline can prove us wrong. She can prove us wrong. No, she's going to come out with some, I want you to know your dog. She's already said that. It's not about knowing your dog. These dogs that attacked her, that attacked you, passed temperament test. The discussion that we should have right now is not about hope. It's not about uh, inspiration or whatever they're talking about. We should be talking about not trusting dogs staying armed in case we have to defend ourselves. This is an image of one of the dogs that attacked her. That is a killer that loves to kill, loves to mutilate. This is not something that should be protected in society. Definitely not something that should be held above our youth. That is what is going on right now, Jacqueline. These mutants, and these are real mutants. Dogs are not animals. They're animals in a sense, but technically they're mutants. This is a fact. That is why they don't act like, they don't behave like other animals. They don't even behave like carnivores, predators. Not even large predators are as aggressive as dogs. They will most likely leave you alone. Matter of fact, they're going to avoid our territory altogether. Not lions, wolves, and so forth. And when they see us, most likely they're going to try to get away from us. That is how animals behave. Dogs are not animals. Dogs are mutants. And they're so simple and basic in function that they walk around constantly fanning their anus fan, their tail, all they know is to let other animals know that they're there. Dogs, when they attack, they wag their tail vigorously when they attack. Why? They're marking their territory. When they wag their tail, that is a, really an act of aggression of a dog trying to be dominant. Because when you scare them, what do they do? They tuck their tail. Why do they do that? To mask their odor, their scent. There's a more dominant creature present, and I don't want them to smell me. That's why they tuck their tails. So they are vicious. Aggression is built into them. And you want to inspire people to become a trainer? Is that what it, she's already said this, people. Want to be a dog trainer. You want to try to train them 
against this type of natural instinct, there is it's not possible. It's not possible. The best you could do is train that dog not to attack you, the person who trained it. You will never train a dog to not attack. And these are not computers that you can just program. These are living organisms who live in the moment. As Jacqueline knows, she had met the dogs before. I don't even like to say that she met them because that sort of humanizes the dogs. She's seen them. She's interacted with them before. That wasn't the first time she saw them. Did they attack you then? No. Oh, I guess they were well-trained then. They were sweet boys then. These are living organisms. There is no training. And why, why on earth? Now, she has gone public and said that she wants to be a trainer, a dog trainer. She said this after the attack. So you want to inspire people to continue doing the same thing that caused them to end up the way you, you have ended up right now? Yeah, I want to inspire you to walk right back in the middle of the street after you did that the first time and got hit by a car. Well, guess what? Now, I want to walk right back into the middle of the street. Let's cut this out. Now is not the time for a little fantasy crazy talk like that, man. It, it is a time to be real and serious. Stop playing. Stop you know, living in la-la land. In dog lover land. What is going on here? So hopefully, she smartens up. Hopefully, she smartens up. We should be talking about avoiding dogs, staying armed, not trusting dogs. We should be talking about the failure of temperament tests, how these temperament tests are unreliable. Okay, those dogs that attack her, attacked her came from a shelter. And the only reason they were allowed to adopt those dogs is because the dogs pass a temperament test. The discussion we need to have is not about hope and all this kind of crap. Stuff that is not being specific anyways. We need to be talking about how unreliable all methods of training, of rehabilitating, these, you cannot change these things. They're not even animals. Natural animals, you might have a chance. But because these are mutants that nature never intended to exist, that nature would kill if you turned them over into nature. Nature would exterminate them. If you believe in God, God hates dogs. Hates, that, is, that much is obvious in all the religious texts and in the fact that Nature would exterminate dogs as well. Th that is what we need to be talking about. Not no hope and change. Huh? Jacqueline Durand said that she did not ask for this. Uh, she did not ask to be attacked the way that she was. That's what she said. But your behavior, yeah, you did. Everybody who exposes themselves to predators that they know full well are killers. Let's not, let's not play dumb. We have to be serious right now, even if it hurts a little bit. All dog lovers, I don't care how much of a dog lover you are, you know that these things are deadly. You know this. And you know that they could snap at any moment and that anything can set them off. And you take the chance anyways. You cannot say that you didn't ask for this. You can't say that. You can't. You just can't. 
based on your behavior, based on the behavior of all other dog lovers, you're asking for it. So what we need to be talking about is why people need to stop asking for it. Especially when over half the victims are children. That includes infants. You know, you say children, you know, you don't think of, we're talking about, see, infants are not children yet. They're still infants. And dogs are the only living creatures that attack kids and infants. We should be talking about why people need to stop asking for it. You bring these things into the home. They need to remove all these stupid movies about these mutants, these killing machine mutants. Just had a dog uh, movie released. I think this year or last year, that movie Dog, shortly uh, before that or whatever, they had another one, the Big Red Dog. All these mutt movies and cartoons. They, had, they made a cartoon about a pit bull. What was the name of that cartoon? How sinister is that? Praising these things and, and projecting, conditioning kids to look at them as fuzzy rabbits, little harmless rabbits. Yeah, they're always showing photos and videos of kids hugging, hugging dogs. Jacqueline, were you aggressive to those dogs? You were not aggressive to those dogs. They attacked you for absolutely no reason. That's not some lone scenario. This happens all the time. Like I said, do your homework. Around 14,000 people are bitten every day in the United States. Reconstructive surgery. That is what Jacqueline had. Tens of thousands every year. Tens of thousands. We need to be talking about exterminating these things. At the very least, exterminating bully breeds. There's really no excuse for us to not exterminate bully breeds. That's totally unacceptable. There's no excuse. No excuse of all dogs. If we don't do anything else, we should exterminate all bully breeds. Doesn't that bother you? Doesn't that bother you? Or are you just comfortable with what happened to you happening to kids and babies? We've gone over uh, toys that have injured kids, hundreds. They rarely reach a thousand. They rarely reach a thousand. Dog bites, about around 7,000 a day. Kids alone, kids alone, around 7,000 are bitten every day. The, the stats are staggering. This is what you are being called to speak out against. The, the mere presence of these things in our society. That is the root cause of the attack. The root cause. So, people, you should be inspired to not be a dog sitter. You should be inspired to not be a dog lover. We need to be talking about how much this is child endangerment to bring these things inside of a home, in society, period, in the community. I don't care. It don't have to be your home. Right? She is being called to wake people up, just like all the rest of them. And they don't answer that call. They don't answer it. You know, I was checking out some comments in the comment section to some of these videos. And I read this comment that stood out. This guy or girl, I think it was a guy. He was sympathetic towards the dogs. I'm sure y'all seen some of these people who feel sorry for the dogs, who worry about the dogs. And they're upset that the, that the uh, dogs are gonna get euthanized. 
and they say, well, the dog was just protecting its territory. It's not the dog's fault. It was just protecting its territory. I know dog lovers, they love that. They love to play that card. Oh, it was just doing what it's supposed to do, being responsible, protecting its territory. No. Uh, shout out to Sugar Plum in the super chat. Big shout out to Sugar Plum. Okay. Let's, let's get the language right, people. We got to get the language right here. Just protecting its home. No. Because the home was not under attack. Jacqueline did not go over there to rob the place. On top of the fact that she had already interacted with them before. But she was not a thief. And that's the problem. You can't use that excuse. Because if the thing is too dumb to know when a person is trying to rob a home or not, then it's too dumb to use as protection. You don't get no mutant predator to protect your home when it's going to attack any and everybody and, and most likely going to attack a child, baby. What is this? This is insanity. Protecting its home. There is no excuse. There's literally no excuse. They, they There's no justification. I've been trying to invite people onto my platform. Professionals to debate this. The dogs have no place in our society. None whatsoever. Nothing that they offer us is worth the risk. Nothing. And we should not, as someone else pointed out, we should not be subservient to these creatures' aggression. They have dozens of triggers, things that will set them off and cause them to attack. They have dozens of them, probably over a hundred. Don't talk to me about my behavior. Don't talk to me about teaching kids how to behave around these things. As if we need to bow down and follow a set of rules so that they don't attack us. Are you out of your mind? We don't have to be, and I will not be, subservient and submit to dogs and their one million triggers. Move in slow motion. Don't stare them in the eye. Don't get too close. Don't stand up. Don't cough. Don't sneeze. Also, you can rub on them. <clears throat> and also, many of you can have intimacy or become intimate with them. That segment of the population, the people who are intimate with these things, I know there's no getting through to those people. And listen, I, I know these people are deranged, but I have to direct what I'm saying to them as well. Because if something can make them snap out of it and get rid of that dog, I'm all well and fine with that. I'll forgive you for being intimate with the mutt if you truly stop and get rid of it. That is what we need to be talking about. And that is what Jacqueline Duran is truly an inspiration for. You are an inspiration to the world to hate dogs. And I hate dogs. 
I hate dogs with every drop of blood in my body. They are hideous, annoying, filthy, nasty, unpleasant to look at, unpleasant to touch, to rub, loud, deadly, aggressive, good-for-nothing mutants. You are an inspiration. I want people to be inspired to hate the very sight of a worthless mutt. To hate the very sight of a block-headed, heartless, soulless, child-killing, dog-loving, young lady mutilating mutant people need to stop sending themselves on a guilt trip in regard to dogs I don't want to hate dogs because that's just wrong no dogs are just wrong because dogs do this. It's wrong to allow them to exist. That is what is immoral. It is immoral to sit back and wait for the next Jacqueline Duran to emerge. If she hasn't already. Or is Jacqueline the next Brooklyn Curry to emerge? Now, look, you don't want to have that discussion. We don't want to have that discussion about what's moral and what's right. It's moral, just, holy, and all of that to exterminate them. We're going to hammer that point home. Y'all going to get the message. I don't know how many of y'all going to have to get mutilated to figure that out. But it's bound to happen. Oh, I feel a lot better. I had to get that off my chest, people. I had to get that off my chest. Big shout out to everybody who joined to listen to me rant once again. Yes, yes, Chef Mutt Meat in the building. I That first sentence jumped out at me. Hate for evil is righteous. Let me say that again. Hate for evil is righteous. And having dogs in society is evil. Okay? Dogs are evil. And they need to be exterminated. Big shout out to everybody. Sibby, Ashar, Beanie Girl, and the Gling. Y'all come to hear me go on another tangent. Y'all know this is therapeutic. This is therapeutic. It... it I listen to these uh, news reports and it builds up, it builds up, builds up. Then I just got to get on here and just let it out. I'm sorry. All right, big shout out to everybody who enjoys it. And hopefully I will see you all on the next live stream as we continue with this crusade.